What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are covering the top five or six rods <laughs> that every bass angler should have, the actions and how you need to apply them to your fishing. Let's go. We talk about rods and reels in every video. We focus a lot of time and attention on them because they're so important to consistent success. Putting the right bait on the right rod will put more fish in the boat. We've been getting a ton of questions, not just lately, all, all the, the time. time, about exact lengths, exact powers, what that's for. What bait should you throw on a seven foot medium versus a medium heavy? We constantly get those questions. So today's video is the five-ish. We couldn't <laughs> agree on number five. So it's actually six rods. But the top rods that if you're coming into bass fishing, if you're expanding your arsenal, what are the first five rods that every angler needs to own? So I'm gonna kick it off. My first one is a spinning rod. Seven foot is my target size. You could be a little bit under, you could be a little bit over, seven foot medium. And don't worry about the exact combos here, okay? These are essentially placeholders. In the video description, we're gonna break down three groups high-end rods, that top five or six, mid-priced rods, and budget rods. So no matter where you are, you can see our exact favorite models for each one of those things. Now the first one for me, if I only had, I say if, when I was younger and I got my first rod, it was literally a seven foot medium. That was my first rod. Because you can do so much with it, spinning will allow you to throw light baits consistently, it makes you look good. Like if you're trying to skip around cover, get in tight places, you're not blowing up your reel all the time. You're not backlashing. Spinning makes it easier to throw a lot of different baits. And that seven foot medium action will let you do everything from shaky head, Senko, some top water. If you want to throw top water on a spinning rod, you could throw top water. It's that universal do everything action. So if you're going to start somewhere, that's where I start. Yeah, that is, we totally agree on this one. Uh, seven foot medium, you could throw light jerk baits. If you want to throw on a spinning rod, you can throw flukes, that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, it is a very, very universal rod. And uh, just to kind of clarify, the, these aren't necessarily exact rod lengths and stuff per se. It's more the action. Right. We're talking about how to apply these specific actions to the different techniques. Right. So with that said, my first one, is going to be a medium light spinning rod. You know, it could be a 610, it could be a seven, a seven two, but a medium light. So a little bit lighter than the medium. And, and here's why. You guys know I like to throw finesse baits a lot, right? Clear water stuff. So you're talking small mouth, spotted bass, large mouth, you gotta get finesse on them. This is the rod that's gonna cover your drop shot, your Ned rig your light finesse swim baits, although you can throw them on the medium as well, but if you're going finesse, you need something a little bit lighter than a medium. And again, a drop shot, super universal, shaky head, light shaky head, light Texas rigs, Ned rigs, all of that sort of stuff, that's what's gonna be covered with that medium light spinning rod. So essentially that jump, that jump from the medium to a medium light, your first two rods, is the first time that you as an angler get into a more technique specific rod. Right. Because the medium will do it all, but it won't do it all perfectly. That medium light just accelerates all those really light action things. Yeah, and these five or six rods will get you going no matter which price point you're at. And as you grow your arsenal, as you grow, you guys know that we have a lot of technique specific rods right. that we'll cover in later videos. But today's video is that general, the five or six rods, the actions that you need to do everything. Right. My next one up, now this is a 610 medium. You guys, if you watch our videos, I preach about this specific rod all the time. But again, it's a placeholder, okay? So a 610 to a seven foot medium, essentially the same thing as my first rod, but in a bait caster. Here you get more refined. When you get to that bait caster, you have the ability to apply a little more power with that reel. You're dialing it in a little better. That medium action Again, so universal. Now it won't do some of the bigger things, but it's gonna let you throw tiny spoons, 
blade baits, the jerk bait is where it, the bread and butter is with this rod. You can throw top waters on it. All of a sudden you're expanding into really into the beginnings of power fishing with that medium action rod. You don't need to go really long on a medium. Medium action rods are so limber throughout in almost every price range. There's some changes, but we'll cover that in the video description. They're so limber throughout that a really long rod, it just gets too much bow, too much flex in it. So those shorter action mediums are really where I would stay. Yeah, again, a medium action rod is so universal. It's probably one of, or if not the most universal, if there was anything that was more universal, it would be the medium heavy. Yeah. Because now you're getting away from that medium action. Now you can truly throw, you know, your light Texas rigs, your light jigs, your light top waters, all of that stuff. So I would say if there is a number one most universal action, it's going to be for a, a bait caster. For a bait caster, it's going to be a medium heavy because you can yeah. you can do so many things on a, a seven foot, seven two, seven four medium heavy action rod. You can throw pretty much all of it. Again, light buzz baits light, I wouldn't throw a frog, but light top waters if you needed to. Uh, you can just get away with a lot of different techniques with that seven, you know, that, that medium heavy action. Yeah. Well, that brings us to rod number five, and this is where we disagree. But for just a quick second, we didn't talk about this ahead of time, but I think we'll probably agree. These first four rods, let's talk about the order in which you would buy them. Okay. If a guy's going to expand his arsenal, do we agree that a seven foot medium spinning would be number one? No. <laughs> this is how it goes, guys. <laughs> Only because you as a fisherman, you're going to know the techniques that you like. Matt might like throwing a six or seven inch shaky head for big largemouth bass. Mm -hmm. I might be throwing a, you know, number two drop shot hook in 25 foot visibility throwing, chasing smallmouth, right? So I'm going to mm -hmm. go with that medium light. So if you're wanting a universal rod to do it all, Yes, mm -hmm. if you want more of that technique specific or you know stuff that fits your type of fishing, then then that's how you gotta make your choice. Okay, so now on casting, which way? Medium or medium heavy first? I would say medium heavy. I actually agree with you. I mean, actually, okay. actually, <laughs> it's pretty rare. What can I say? Uh, medium heavy is going to complement that spinning rod, right? You're going to you're going to cover the most bases and then you can come back in and fill where you need to fill yeah if you're talking jumping between two rods medium and medium heavy absolutely medium spinning rod medium heavy bait caster um but yeah all depends on you that sounded like you waffled that sounded like like you went with mine there in the end nope <laughs> all right last rod why don't you go first all right so again this is a where we disagreed only because five rods that's tough it is tough and it, it not it Five rods is a lot, right? You know, when we first got started, I did everything on like a little ugly stick in a float tube, right? I did right. everything that I could possibly. So, you know, five rods, um, it's hard because there's some really cool techniques that you can't necessarily do on a medium heavy. And that's where I leaned toward a heavy action rod. You know, this is something if summertime, I want to throw a frog or I want to do some some flipping. I can do light punching. I can do a lot of cover fishing with a heavy action rod. I can throw spinner baits, uh, swim baits, light swim baits, Kitex, Matt Allen swim bait head, Kitex, all of that sort of stuff. It gets a little too heavy for a medium heavy action. I'm going to go with the heavy action um, because I just feel, you know, I went, I went the light side on the, on the finesse mm -hmm. and now I'm going heavy on the, on the casters, the bait casters, um, just to kind of, for my five rod choice, that kind of fits me better. So I can't disagree with any of that. Obviously you guys know how much both of us love to power fish. We finesse fish, but we also power fish. There's a huge place for that heavy rod. Where I disagreed is that the biggest hole that I saw, that fifth rod is hard. It's hard to know which way to go. For me, before I got the power rod, I would want a crankbait rod because that is something that whether you're standing on the bank, you're in a kayak, you're on a bass boat, it doesn't matter. Crankbaits are such a huge part of what we do, whether that's deep cranking, whether that's square billing, whether it's throwing a lipless, ultimately you're going to need both those rods. It's not like you're going to become a proficient angler and not throw a crankbait 
or not throw a frog, frog or right. a jig or something else. So it's just the order of where you're going to buy those rods. And you've got two anglers here that are passionate about fishing and can't agree on the order to buy those rods. So know that it really is up to you. But I think those six the four, rods, yeah, the, the four, the, well, the, the four especially, yeah, yeah. really creates a great arsenal. And then you can expand from there. And one thing that I found in the last couple of years, as we've really expanded, you know, we've expanded in different lines, high end, low end, brands, all sorts of things that we've really specialized our fishing. The one rod in my arsenal that almost vanished is actually my first rod. When you get to the other end of the spectrum and you're specialized, that seven foot medium spinning almost went away because my other rods were so detailed mm -hmm. that I almost never needed to carry the one that would do it all. And I found, I found that interesting, but on the front end, you've got to have that rod because it does it all. That's just the progression of your bass fishing over time. Yeah, and it's always great to have that rod. Right. You know, when you have your wife on the boat or a friend or kids or whoever it may be, you just give them that rod and right. go, hey, do, throw whatever you want. Throw anything. It. Yeah, go for you it. You have at it. So uh, hopefully this helps, guys. You know, you guys know us. We know that we have a lot of technique-specific videos, a lot of technique-specific rods and reels, and here's why. Those videos are coming, but we get this question asked so often, hey, I'm just getting started, or I want to upgrade to you know, better gear, which five rods should I get or, or which rod should I get first? Right. Um, these actions, it's not all about the brand or the rod itself, but those actions are the top five or six that you should, you should definitely start with. So down in the video description, just to explain that for you, all three categories, high end, mid range, budget, will give you of all the rods we've played with, our favorites, our, our five or six at each one of those prices, so no matter which group you're in, you're getting that best bang for the buck. The rod that covers that extra thing that stood out to us will break that out for you. But those are the actions, those are the lengths and the thinking behind why we use them. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys.